Now, I want to get back to these uh, personal attacks on Peter Dutton. The Prime Minister was asked about them today, and here's what he had to say. Peter Dutton represents a division, and he never has a, a, an answer that's positive or constructive. I caught up with the Shadow Energy Minister, Ted O'Brien, to get his take on these attacks on Peter Dutton. Uh, I've heard a lot about this, Chris, including from Jim Chalmers. I mean, seriously, as the Treasurer, he sat down to write a speech. Um, it's not about inflation, productivity, uh, power prices, uh, the housing crisis. No, it's a blatant personal attack on Peter Dutton. This says more about Jim Chalmers than it does about Peter Dutton. It was interesting that Anthony Albanese didn't back up the dangerous line, but he's happy to call Peter Dutton divisive and all the rest of it. Let's just have a look at uh, what your leader, Peter Dutton, said in response. I think it's also important to point out that, obviously, the Prime Minister this morning in his comments walked back some of what Jim Chalmers had to say. So I think there is real internal friction within the Labor Party, and it shows the dynamic that's going on in the Labor Party at the moment, because this is a government where the wheels are falling off. Yeah, so there we go, teasing out the uh, tensions, leadership tensions within the Labor Party. But I think the point here, Ted, is the, the Americanisation of Australian politics. We all look at how divisive and personal and nasty American politics is. Uh, Labor here, in, instead of talking about how they're going to cut government spending or put downward pressure on inflation or fix the electricity system, all they're doing is going for these attacks on Peter Dutton. And you can't treat Australian like mugs, Chris. I think Australians will see through this. I mean, seriously, uh, this is the government of the day. We are amidst a cost of living crisis. And the best they can come up with is to attempt some sort of character assassination. I mean, seriously, what does this say to mums and dads at home who are struggling to pay the bill? The senior citizen who doesn't know if they're going to turn on the heater tonight because they can't pay their power bills. What the Prime Minister, the Treasurer, the government of the day, the best they can do is try to attempt some sort of character assassination. It's poor form, but more than that, it's just out of touch. Yeah, it's pretty pathetic. I think most Australians will see through it. Let's get to your portfolio area and the big challenge of trying to guarantee and deliver affordable, reliable electricity to this country. When we look at uh, the coalition plans to cut spending, a lot of it seems to be in that space where Labor's tipping tens of billions of dollars into transmission lines and the like that won't be needed if you can get your nuclear plan up. Tell us where the savings are in the nuclear plan, as well as, of course, the, the costs in the medium to longer term? Chris, there's no doubt that if you replace retiring coal plants at the site of coal plants, then you are leveraging the existing transmission lines and you are replacing a 24-7 baseload power with a similar comparable technology. Uh, that in itself takes away the need for Labor's extraordinary rollout of transmission lines. I mean, you can't forget, Labor still believes in a green energy sort of superpower idea, exporting green hydrogen. Now, that's going to take up to 28,000 kilometres of transmission lines, all of which are going to be paid by the Australian people, one way or another, by taxpayers or consumers. Our plan is completely different. Uh, we believe in a balanced energy mix. We believe in system planning that puts the consumer at the centre and basically says, what is the cheapest way that we can keep the lights on and decarbonise at the same time? What we see in that is we don't need to have this extraordinary rollout of transmission lines steamrolling communities. Um, and that ultimately means it's not just cheaper from, um, from the consumer's perspective, but also businesses, many of whom are now are now closing their doors. So uh, it all comes back to we're in a cost of living crisis. There's a different way for us to manage our electricity grid and we can do it, which is cheaper. Yeah, of course, there's going to be a cost in constructing nuclear generation. But as you say, a lot of savings in, in the transmission and, of course, some of the additional renewables you won't need. But, of course, to get there through the time frame to get some baseload uh, nuclear energy into the system, you will need a lot more gas generation. Uh, everybody's accepting that, all the industry experts we talk to. 
when it comes to explo exploiting more gas, extracting more gas and building more peaking plants, more gas generating plants, will that be government money or do you expect that can all be funded by private investors? There's no doubt, Chris, that is the priority. Number one, we shouldn't be closing our, our baseload power stations prematurely. Number two, we need to pour more gas into the system. Now, the biggest message I've had over nearly two and a half years now from the gas industry is government needs to clear away all the hurdles. I mean, it, it is penalising the industry right now, which is why we are seeing a flight of capital overseas. So that comes down to the approvals process. There is a role for government, though, and the role for government isn't just clearing away those um, bottlenecks. We need to have better infrastructure in this country. We need to make sure we are pushing industry for peaking plants. So we need to get more gas out of the ground. We need to distribute gas where it's needed. And then we also need generators so that it can be used. Um, now, all of these parts of the supply chain need to be worked on. There are different roles for government. But the private sector right now is saying, we're up for it, but government, can you please just get out of the way, stop heightening sovereign risk? That has to be our priority. Yeah, and it's got to happen no matter what happens with nuclear or renewables. We need more of that gas no matter what, so yeah, in my so view true. and so the view true. of many experts. Yes. Yeah, Great. Thanks for joining us from Perth today, Ted O'Brien. Thanks very much, Chris.